For this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make the axle peg. Uh, if you think you can already start with kind of the basic shape and just need the information for how to add in this hex socket, the thread, and the chamfer, uh, you can kind of jump ahead in this video. In the description, I'm going to add um, like a little timestamp or something to let you know when you should skip to if you just need kind of the final touches and help with that. So if you do need help with the beginning, then you can start now. If you need help with just those final touches, again, jump ahead and yep. All right. So in, right now we're going to start our sketch. And the reason why I have two different drawings here is this is the drawing that you guys have in your packet. And for some people, I find that they have a lot of confusion with what's going on. So I have kind of a simplified one over here. It doesn't have all the dimensions. It kind of has this base step that I'm going to be uh, doing before kind of the final touches. Do realize that this is not really dimensioned all that well. Uh, I do have extension lines and leader lines crossing. Uh, this right over here is over dimensioned. So if you were to dimension this yourself, you'd either delete this one, this one, or this one out of this grouping of three. The reason why I do have it over dimensioned is just so it's a little bit quicker when I'm referencing dimensions for you so you know what I'm talking about. But do realize that this is not properly dimensioned perfectly. Um, okay, so first things first, what I always like to do is start out with a rough kind of sketch of what it looks like. Um, I know what I'm drawing is going to look kind of awful compared to what it's supposed to be. Just realize that for this one, uh, one of the problems people sometimes have is they try to add in the arc now. Uh, I found that that actually leads to a lot of like weird problems. So that's why this is open um, until we need to add it. So that's going to be my final piece for the base uh, of our axle peg. So first things first, I always add in the largest dimension. So that is this one right here. So if you look on your packet, uh, image, it's a little hard to see what it is because it's actually broken into two pieces. So our first piece is kind of the head of our axle peg. It is this dimension right here. So that piece plus this. So I didn't really go over this too, too much with you guys earlier, but this times one uh, actually means one inch. So that's the length of that. So again, that's why I have this broken down a little bit more down here. So you actually have to add two different things together to get the total length of uh, your axle peg. So we're going to add that in. So it's 1.125. All right. And again, if you have things that go off the screen, if you press the home button, you can see everything that's going on again. So if you watch some of the other videos, you know how to do this. But I'm going to turn this into a center line. So I clicked on it. Click on the center line tool. It's a center line. Uh, I just like to do that so then I don't have to do any calculations for anything. So this top portion right here is this top portion and is this piece right here. So this is just letting you know that your axle peg that has a hex socket on the top has a little flat section to it. That's why it says flat. So I'm going to click here, this little corner, this little piece, go over, and now I can type in my dimension of a quarter inch. All right, I'm going to go down to the bottom. Okay, this one might be a little bit hard to find on here, but uh, if you remember our lesson on how to read thread notes, you'll be able to read this part. So we know that this is the diameter, and it's a quarter inch. So we can put our diameter in. So this next part is the length of the thread. Okay, so the length of their thread, again, is one inch. All right, and the next part, we still have this green line, so we can know that this is still movable. So if I click over to here, to over to here, uh, some people try to just dimension this. You're going to have to do some calculations if you decide to do it that way. So instead, click on the center line, and then you can add in this one right here. This is our dimension for the diameter of kind of the larger part of the head of the axle peg. All right, so that is four, or sorry, point 
four, two, two. All right, so this, I know it turned, I'm gonna actually exit out the dimensional tool to show you this. So I know it turned blue, and normally that's fully constrained. It's actually still a little bit unconstrained, so we can see it moves. And one thing I noticed a few days ago uh, is this down here. It lets you know how many dimensions are still needed to fully constrain it, which is kind of neat. I don't know why I never realized that was there before. So I'm going to add in a dimension for this line. And it's this one right here. And if you're having a hard time seeing it, I brought it over here. So 0 0.031. So here is where we now add in that arc. All right. So the neat thing about this one is that we can either dimension it or we can drag this center point to this um, center line. Uh, the only reason why I know that is because I've done this a bunch of times, but I'm going to actually show you. So if we take this and drag it to the center line and it clips in there, this actually happens to be our correct dimension. So you can see the dimension right there. I'm just going to cancel out of it because it's going to give me error. But it has our same dimension right there. It's kind of neat. Uh, so if you make parts over and over again or certain things, you're going to learn kind of tricks to it. But if you want, you could have put that dimension in instead of connecting that point to the center line. Okay. So here is where we can now finish and revolve. And again, because we only have one sketch, one area for it to extrude, so just one shape, um, or sorry, not extrude, revolve. And we have our center line highlighted. It knows exactly what we want to do. So right there. Click OK. All right, and then click on Home. So that was just kind of the basic part of it. So now we're going to add in the more kind of fancy things. Uh, so if you could do the easier part on your own, then you probably just started the video up right now. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have to add in our chamfer. We are going to have to add in our hex socket and our thread. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add in our chamfer. So for our chamfer, I'm going to tip this so we can see the bottom. We have a couple different options for chamfer. We have one that's distance, so it's uh, equal distance for both sides of it. We have distance and angle, and we have two distances. So two distances um, basically means it's not going to be the same. So this one is for if it's 45 degree angle. This one, it could be 45. It could be anything other than 45 for the angle, and then your distance. And again, two different distances. Right now it's all set up for just kind of basic. So I'm going to use this one right here. So distance and angle just so you can kind of see how this one works. So we can click on our face. All right, now we got to click on the edge. All right, so right now you can see that that kind of doesn't look the same as that. What we're going to have to do is change our distance. We can see here we have our angle, so 45 degrees, 45 degrees, that's what we need, by 0 0.03. So that's the distance we need. So 0 0.03. All right, so that's looking better. So that's how we could do this one. The other way we could actually just do this right here. So just set the distance to 0 0.03. And because distance and distance is the same, and it's 45, you could do it that way. Um, but I'm just going to keep it this way to show you guys this again. So face, edge. OK, it's two clicks. you got to do them in the right order, else it kind of messes it up. All right, so we are going to click OK. So that's what we have for there. All right, the next thing, we're going to add in our thread. So thread tool, click on it. Chances are it might be what you want, might not be. So we're going to click on the specification. All right, so looking at this, we want it to be a quarter inch. Our size is a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch, and coarse thread. So if we look at the designation, it should match up nicely. All right, and then the class that for now you can just ignore, and it's right-handed. All right, and then click OK. So that's all we really had to do for the thread. Nice and easy for that one. All right, our next thing is going to be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to have to start a sketch on this top flat surface, the part that said flat earlier. 
and I'm going to use, show you a new tool. So we're going to click on the arrow underneath rectangle, and we're going to use the polygon tool for this one. So we need to make sure it's six sides. Uh, it's the default, so chances are it's already six on your computer. So we're going to click on this little green dot in the center. And right now I'm just going to have it kind of off to the side. Uh, just make sure, see this white line that's popping up? Do not select that. All right. So what you have to do is click to place it, right click, and then I think it said okay. Um, just so then you finish this, because if you just click done or something, uh, you're not going to have your shape. Next thing, we want to make sure we kind of level this out so it's nice and straight. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this one. Horizontal constraint. And I'm going to click on this one. So it's going to just kind of line it up. Um, I prefer mine looking this way. If you want, you can have it tilted the other way and use the other tool. Really, that is not the important part. The important part is just to make sure it's lined up nicely uh, with either our horizontal constraint or our vertical constraint. Uh, really, you can pick either one. Again, doesn't matter. Now, if we look at our kind of notation for this, the hex socket, all right, it says two 30 seconds across flats. So across flats, what that means is literally across the two flat lines. That's it. Uh, so we're going to put in five slash 32. All right. And now we can finish our sketch. Extrude. Okay, not up, because we don't want to join. We want to cut. Clearly not that far. So if we look over here, it's a little hard to see the decimal point, but it is 0.111. Okay, that's how far it's cut in. And click OK. All right. So that is our axle peg. So it's all set. All right. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to start the work drawing for this. And I'm going to go over a couple new tools uh, for work drawings that are specific to the axle peg.